So in Singapore, we have had statistics uh, for TB since the uh, late 1950s because the National TB Registry was started then, uh, to be precise, in 1957. So in the early years, late 50s and early 60s, the rate of TB in Singapore was uh, in the region of uh, maybe three or 400 per 100,000 population, which is uh, far higher than now. But uh, with uh, the decades, it has come down. Now, it, today, it is around 40 per 100,000, which is about 10 times less. Uh, most of the decline happened in the initial decades, uh, maybe 60s, 70s, and maybe the, up to the early 80s, perhaps. And uh, largely due to general improvements in social, economic, and welfare conditions, housing conditions, smaller households, uh, and of course, uh, the availability of TB medication. So I, I would put it to a combination of factors, because TB is not just a disease of an individual person is also is affected by societal conditions. Specific measures against TB. Well, for a start, they started the TB registry in 1957 because you can't uh, tackle a problem until you know the extent of it. So statistics were gathered and reported annually. Uh, and they had a specific national TB program, which was uh, also started in 1957 in the TB control unit which was responsible for administering the national program. So they had a dedicated unit which dealt with just TB, and I think that was a very, very good thing. And this thing is still happening today. Because it, I don't think that TB can just be treated by any, like any other disease, like high blood pressure, diabetes, and whoever sees can treat and so on. It, there must be a programmatic system in place to make sure that everything which is supposed to happen is happening. Yes, I think that they had very important and big roles. For a start, they, SATA was very active. Uh, they raised awareness of TB. Uh, in, our, in my young day, younger days, they used to sell these Christmas stamps and so on. So people, even as a child, I knew there was such a thing as SATA, and there was general awareness of it. And they also were very supportive of uh, the patients because many of the patients who had TB uh, came from very low socioeconomic groups uh, with financial problems and difficulties and uh, requiring assistance and welfare and so on. And I think they contributed a lot in that area. Uh, I'm not aware of what Rotary Club uh, did in the past, but I'm sure that they, will, they can have a role because we need many agencies and advocates in the community to keep this uh, awareness of TB alive. Well, very simply, if you want to tackle any enemy, you have to know the enemy. And this enemy is one which infects the lungs. And because it infects the lungs, and the response of the patient is to cough, uh, the, the, the germ uses this to transmit itself and to propagate itself. So when a person coughs, it expels the uh, little particles which contain the TB germ, which if inhaled by another person, uh, can infect the other, the other person. Uh, and then this other person who is infected uh, will then have a chance of developing the disease. Now the chance of developing disease after getting infected is not very high, but high enough to cause a problem for society. So the rate of infection a rate of uh, progression to active TB disease after being infected may be in the region of about 10% in an immune competent person during some time in his life. Now, TB is a very slow tempo disease. It's not like a flu or some viral disease where if you get infected, you will know within a few days if someone has given you the flu or measles or mumps or whatever it is. In TB, you may keep the germ for several months or several years or several decades even before it emerges as a disease. Uh, so, but most of this uh, activation into active disease occurs in the early years after the acquisition of infection, maybe a year or two following that. So therefore, we have got two opportunities as a public health intervention. One is to detect the case early because late detection means this patient with TB in his lungs has opportunity to spread to more and more people. Then treat the person and treat the person is not so straightforward because he has to take 
quite many drugs for quite a long time. Now, all of us know that even a simple course of antibiotics for about 7 to 10 days that we all forget after we get better. In TB, the treatment has to be taken for up to 6 months, 9 months. And uh, so there's many opportunities for the patient not to be exactly adherent to the treatment. This causes problems because he may not be properly cured. He may continue to spread to other people. He may get another episode of TB because the germs were not fully eliminated in subsequent years following apparent cure. And he may actually spawn drug-resistant germs, which then he spreads to other people. So therefore, when we start the treatment, we must be able to hold the patient to treatment until successful outcome in order to keep the community safe. Yes, so um, it has been shown many, many years ago, more, more than maybe 10 or 20 or more years ago, that any medication given for a prolonged period of time, uh, several months or so, for example, as is required in diabetes or high blood pressure, TB included, uh, adherence to the drug, if it is left to the patient, may be around 50% on average. Of course, it varies. There are some people, some, some studies will show more and some studies will show less. Less means as low as 11% of people who actually took their medicines properly. Uh, in the case of, um, of uh, diabetes, hypertension and other diseases which affect the patient only, no one else suffers if the patient is not compliant. So the diabetes, you get your own, you get your leg amputated, you get a heart attack, high blood pressure, you get a bleed in the brain. It's your own funeral in a way. But in TB, you make other people suffer with you. If you do not take your medicines properly, your TB disease is not properly handled, you continue to be a threat to the community. So it cannot be left to the patient to decide whether he's going to be adherent to the treatment or not. Society must be interested in making sure that the patient is taking the medicine so that society is safe. And therein comes the program of DOT. DOT is called Directly Observed Treatment. It may sound ridiculous, but this is the way that the world is go, is, has been ad addressing the issue this last far for TB. This means that the pills that a patient is supposed to be taken to take are taken in the presence of a responsible healthcare worker to see that every dose throughout the entire course of six months or nine months or whatever are actually taken. So the patient doesn't hold the medicines themselves. They go to meet the healthcare worker or they go to a clinic and they take the pills. And the moment they miss the pills, the healthcare worker knows and calls him, reminds him, recalls him and so on. And this is a kind of a, as sure a way as we can get to make sure that the outcome is good for the community. Uh, there are a few issues. One is um, uh, public health requires cooperation of the patient and the community. Uh, we need support from all quarters because public health is where a person has to do something not in his own interest but in the other people's interest. And this is where the problem is. We, in our own interest, there's a tendency for us, not 100%, even in our own interest, we don't follow instructions sometimes. You, know, you, say, you tell the patient, don't smoke, he still smokes. And then he gets lung cancer. It's, 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 it's against uh, medical advice. Uh, so, in, uh, we have to enlist uh, the support of NGOs, like, for example, you mentioned, could be SATA, it could be Rotary Club, or it could be any advocacy group, to help us to get community support to implement measures which to the individual patient may seem restrictive because he's doing it, he doesn't really want to take the medicine but we say you must take the medicine so we're kind of uh, making public health a higher priority than its individual health in, in, uh, in certain circumstances and that is why uh, it is very important that the community knows that this DOT and other restrictions that we impose on people who have transmissible infectious diseases is actually good for the whole community. So support is very, very important. The, the problem we face, in, we have a problem of drug resistance in Singapore, but it's much less than in our surrounding countries. 
uh, in the surrounding countries around us, apart from Malaysia. Malaysia's uh, drug resistance uh, levels are about the same as Singapore. Uh, first to say that multi-drug resistance TB is the one that we fear most uh, because it almost converts normal TB almost into another disease. The treatment becomes very difficult, very long, very expensive and perhaps less successful. For all that trouble, uh, the patient is suffering from the drug side effects and so on. And uh, if drug res multi-drug resistant TB should ever become the predominant TB, then I would say that uh, it would be almost impossible with our current strategies to control TB ever. We are at a point where we can still use our existing strategies, in other words, without the new drugs, without new vaccines, without anything. Uh, but the level of multi-drug resistant TB is rising frightening, at a frightening rate and may one day cross a point where it becomes... That's when we put up our hands and say, I surrender. We must never let that day come. Well, uh, the highest hope I have is for a vaccine because this requires very little cooperation and support from the community. And it has been shown that just that one or two doses of vaccine and you can eliminate disease, the disease. Which, and it has actually happened before. We have actually eliminated smallpox just by a single strategy of vaccination. And uh, polio, while it is making little comebacks here and there, can and I hope will be eliminated just by a single strategy. So I hope that TB, in TB, uh, they will find a vaccine which is implementable uh, and easily administered so that uh, it requires not so much of the struggles we have now dealing with patients who have to take medicines for the entire six months or nine months. Yes, uh, I think that uh, uh, Singapore is a very small island and a very dense population and also a country where there's a lot of uh, um, transboundary movements of, of, outside, uh, of uh, visitors to Singapore and Singaporeans to other countries. So there are many, many opportunities for uh, an infectious disease to become successful in Singapore. That's the first thing. Uh, but I, as for the uh, viral diseases and the bacterial diseases which transmit and express themselves very rapidly, I think Singapore has a very good system in place. For TB, I think we have quite a good system in place, but it could be better.